Hey guys, happy homebrew Wednesday. Ooh, should have this in my hand when I talk. Um, yeah, happy homebrew Wednesday. Cheers. Technically, technically it's Thursday. Well, not technically, it actually is Thursday. But, um, yesterday I was in no, um, I was in no state to, to record anything. I was, um, I got back from Berlin yesterday, and I, we didn't get back quite as late on Tuesday as I, uh, as, uh, as planned for, uh, because we, we missed a lot of traffic in, uh, in Germany, but, uh, I was still just really beat, and, um, and then I, I woke up and did some work because, well, why not? And then, yeah, just, uh, crashed again in the afternoon, and... So I just didn't get around to recording uh, Homer Wednesday, but um, wanted to wanted to record a quick one. I don't know if I'm gonna do. Um, I'm actually brewing tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll get around to a fucking Friday or not. But uh, anyway, uh, this is the. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this one actually, and um, this is the uh, this is the grandfather, the first grandfather beer. It's uh, it's finally in the keg and carbonated and on tap. Uh, it's getting it's getting a little clearer. It's still pretty hazy and chunky. Uh, it had some. I have a video where I did a transfer. I tried a pressure transfer and I haven't gotten it edited yet. So that's that's going to be coming up. My first attempt at pressure transferring from the uh, from the Chronicle. But uh, yeah, so. This beer, it's a, uh, it's a smash. It's, uh, just Pale Ale Malts and Columbus. And, uh, you know what? It's not very good. Um, it's not very good at all. Uh, the, the nose is okay. You get a lot of, you get Columbus on the nose, but the, the taste... It's very, um, it's got that flavor that I haven't tasted in my, in my beers since, like, since the beginning of homebrewing, when I, my first few batches, and it's that stressed yeast flavor, that uncontrolled fermentation temperature flavor, which I've, I've almost completely forgotten about, but it's now, now that it's in this beer, it's all that I can taste, it's all that I can I mean, it's it's decently bitter. It's relatively drinkable, um, you know. And Columbus is a really great hop. I really like that dank dankness. But the, that that yeast, that flavor in the beer, just bugs me. And you know what it is? It's it's exactly it's it's uncontrolled fermentation temperature. Um, I put it in that Chronicle, and uh, I at the time that I bought the Chronicle and put the first beer in it, the um, I was still waiting to see if the temperature controller for that that series brewmaster series was going to come to Europe, which it hasn't yet still. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you remember from my my brewmaster the chronicle video. Uh, it has a it has like a, um, a cooling spiral stainless steel spiral on the inside with two uh, inputs on the side to to do temperature control. And you, you pump like water or, I mean, if you're real fancy, you can get glycol and pump it through there. But, uh, yeah, that, that thing, the thing that the, the official thing hasn't come out yet. And I really need to, I really need to figure something out, uh, to control the temperature because it, uh, it, it changed wildly just sitting, you know, sitting out in my house. Uh, it would, it would fluctuate between like 19, which is where I kind of like to keep it. That's where I like to ferment ales at, and then it jumped, I mean, it probably got up to 24, maybe more degrees Celsius, which is way, way too high, and I, I can taste it in the beer that the yeast was super stressed out, fermented too, too hot. Oh well, I mean, I was, um, 
I really just wanted to brew a beer at that time and get a beer going and try out that new equipment, but um, you know, I paid for it in the end. My not not getting all my ducks in a row. Now I now I'm paying for it in the beer, and I'm not saying it's undrinkable. I'm gonna drink it. It's not it's a, not a drain pour beer, but it's it's not up to the quality that I'm usually shooting for. And uh, so I've started to put together my plan for uh, for doing some temperature control. And my, the first part came yesterday. My wife and I were at the pet store, and uh, I was in the uh, fish aisle. And she came up and said, uh, you, you, you can't be serious that you found something for brewing even in the pet store. Well, I did. This is, ah, focus on it. Don't, all right, or don't focus on it, whatever. This is an aquarium pump. And, um, yeah, it's actually pretty cheap. Cheaper than any of the other uh, things that I've looked at for this kind of, uh, this kind of job. There it is right there. You can see that it's just a little nipple or a little little out outflow thing. There's the the inflow is here, and it's it's pretty small. Uh, and then it's got a yeah its own power supply. So it's rated to do 150 to 300 liters an hour. So way more than enough to push uh, push water through the cooling uh, pack on the uh, on the brewmaster. Uh, so, and it was cheaper than uh, some of the other little pumps I'd looked at or looked at on Amazon and stuff. So, uh, and it's it's built to run continuously. So you know for aquariums, so that's that's good. And uh, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna do the job rather well. And then my my idea is, or or I mean what the what the actual idea is is that uh, I'm gonna get a small cooler, a uh, small insulated cooler. And I'm gonna run tubing from the from the Chronicle inlets down into the down into the uh, uh, the cooler into this, so you know out in and out, and then uh, hopefully I can uh, I can just chill the water in the cooler using like frozen water bottles or you know just water from the from the fridge, and uh, that's gonna be like my first setup, and I need to get a temp controller to. To, to you know get it to stop when when it needs to stop uh, I lent my STC 1000 out to uh, someone else uh, another brewer because I wasn't using it at the time and I to see if I can get that back but uh, give me recommendations if you guys use any other kind of um, uh, temp controllers that maybe come pre-wired because my STC 1000 is kind of crappy because um, I'd say that it's because I'm not really great at wiring, but that would imply that I know how to do any kind of wiring at all. So, but um, if you if there are any really good like pre-wired ones that'll look a little bit um, better and maybe be a little safer, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I have to worry about just because it's going to be on all the time. You know, probably in a corner somewhere, not being monitored by anybody. Kind of like if everything is manufacturing manufactured wired i don't know maybe i'm just being paranoid but anyway yeah if you give any um any uh, good tips for that but that's uh, that's something that i'm gonna do really soon and it's not gonna be in time i want to brew tomorrow i'm gonna brew my uh hoppy brown ale let the chinooky win uh just because i haven't brewed in so long and it's really bugging the crap out of me and i have the next four days off so i had just I have to brew. I have to brew something. So, but uh, I I am gonna do that beer tomorrow, and it is gonna go in the Chronicle. And I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Uh, I think that uh, one of the issues was that uh, that the my Chronicle was in the bathroom, and the bathroom is um, it has heated floors, and my wife went in and turned the radiator up and you know the the heat just radiated right up the legs of the of the fermenter and kept it pretty warm you know along with the yeast heating everything up so I think that was part of the problem and then uh, you know I turned those off a few times and crashed the temp and yeah so anyway 
I found a more stable temperature place for it, so hopefully the beer will be a little bit better, and I think a, um, a darker beer will be a little more forgiving as well. Anyway, yeah, that's, um, that's my, that's my brewing updates. Let me know about the, and, uh, let me know about the, uh, that kind of stuff, and, uh, oh, hang on just a second. I wanted to keep this under 10 minutes, and I've already gone over, but. I had a question for, um, mostly for Tony Yates, and I, I, maybe I should just write him, but anybody who has those broom, uh, a chronicle or anything like that, do your seals get discolored? Um, I'm having a hell of a time getting this discoloration off the seals. They don't really smell, they just, they just discolored from, you know, from, yeah, from the yeast and the hops. And uh, I'm gonna soak them overnight in a really strong PBW solution, but uh, I'm hoping that'll help. But yeah, let me let me know if you, th uh, yeah, what do you think about that? I have spare seals, and I'm not sure if that's just you know discoloration, and I shouldn't worry about it, or if I should worry about it. Let me know. All right, this is a big one. Woo! All right, guys. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. See you later. I'll take brooding footage tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, you'll see it eventually. Later.